you've got a, a pretty big portfolio to liquidate your lower performing assets. Uh, for the guy out there who maybe has two rentals, not a hundred rentals. Sure. Um, should he be considering liquidating two to get cash? Yeah, great question. So in 2006, I bought, uh, we bought 13 rental properties that year. And that was with not really a strategy besides like, it's like heroin. Yeah. Or like, oh, you guys are slapping my arms so you guys watch this after. It's like addictive. Like, you're like yeah. oh, here's the deal. Here's the deal. Here's the deal. Kind of like Oprah. You get a car. You get a car. You get a car. You get a car, right? <laughs> right. So, um, I mean, someone who has two rental properties, I would suggest that you uh, fix any deferred maintenance in the next 60 days okay. that you're able to. I think you're going to see uh, some contractors not be as busy mm -hmm. because of a lot of homeowners are not going to choose to take on other projects <clears throat> right. they wanted to do. So yep. you might get a little better pricing if you have good communication skills with your contractors and make sure you pay them on time. Yep. Um, I think it's always good to reevaluate your portfolio. I think personally, you should plan on keeping your rental properties for 10 years. Mm -hmm. So like, let's say you bought two of them five years ago, so it's at 2015. I think you reevaluate your portfolio every fall. I'm gonna share a couple things actually with that, if that's okay right Please. now. Uh, the first thing that we do, and I'm actually gonna write this down for myself. The first thing that we do is we and we evaluate the, the, the value, right? Uh -huh. So number one is evaluate the value of the property. So every fall we pull comps to see what the summer's sales look like. Got it. And I like doing that in November because if you're pulling the comps in November, you're, if you're pulling comps from the previous 90 days, it's October, September, and August sales. Okay. So October, September, and August sales uh, are your July, August, June, or July, August, September under contracts. Yeah. And normally, in, in a, we'll call it in a hot market like we've been in, normally those listings are 30 days previously. Right. So if we're monitoring June, July, and August listings, yeah. it gives us a pulse on what we're doing with the market. So um, with that, number one is reevaluating the comps. Number two is what is the gross rents? Okay. So gross rents is we're taking into consideration, hey, based on the summer, what is the rent of the property? The third thing is what's the depreciation of the property for taxes? Got it. So as we're looking at the depreciation with the taxes, if we're, if we're looking at the depreciation with the taxes, then we can take into consideration what's the gross, what's the total value, what's the gross rents, what's the depreciation. The fourth one that we take into consideration is, is capital expenditures. So what I mean by capital expenditures, for example, Right now, we're adjusting our maintenance to have to be sensitive with the contractors to do focus on outside work right now. Mm. So rather than normally we would be doing spring inspections right now for yeah. renewals, but because we want to adhere to to the best of our ability based on what we know, we want to adhere to like health and safety concerns by the local uh, government. Yes, our contractors have also in different ways shared. Hey, we're we want to be safe too. We totally understand. So to the best of our ability, we're gonna focus on doing work on the outsides of homes right now. Yep. And then when we have emergencies, they're gonna go in and take care of stuff. Um, but then also we have normally vacant homes that we're remodeling to flip. So right now, while the weather's, when there's good weather outside, mm -hmm. we're focusing on working outside. Nice. And then when it's raining, we're gonna have them go work inside. So as we go back to that, so number one is review the current value of the property. Number two is what's the gross rents. Number three is what's the depreciation on your tax returns? Number four, what does your capital expenditures look like? Because if you're doing your books on a monthly basis, mm -hmm. you're gonna have a good idea of what it costs to have tenant turnovers. And then number five, what area, like what's that area looking like, right? right. So I'll get, can I give another example? Yes. So in Glendale, Utah, Glendale, Utah, for those of you guys that are not from Utah, mm -hmm. is west of the freeway, I-15, by uh, Delta Center, uh, Energy Solution Arena, Vivint, <laughs> now it'll probably be the Shiraki Stadium in a couple years, okay? Um, but that is a very up and coming area because it's the last affordable pocket in Salt Lake City proper. Yes. Because people want to reduce the commute. Right. Now, if you have a property in Glendale, Utah, and this was talking to like 
there's two realtors that I'm talking to you right now to help them out. One of the properties they own backs the freeway. Got it. The other one is about 750 square feet. So there's some uniqueness of the properties. They're smart by listing the properties more economically, mm -hmm. even if it was on the other side of the street or is 100 square feet bigger, yeah, they'd get another 20K. Yeah. But because they're selling the properties aggressively, knowing normally first time home buyers are the buyers, normally first time home buyers a lot of times are in the service industry, mm. travel, restaurant, different things that are shut down, managers, general managers, like they're being proactive and, and I would encourage them to be sensitive with like, hey, who, who's really your buyer, right? Right. So as you reevaluate, now let me pick a different area just for f fun. Same west side of the freeway, but e but north, we'll call it Rose Park. Yeah. So you have you have Poplar Grove, you have actually uh, Glendale, Poplar Grove, Fair Park, which I call South Rose Park. <laughs> okay, but Fair Park, and everyone that lives in Fair Park is like, no, we live in Fair Park. Okay, Fair Park, then Rose Park. Then you have North Rose Park. North Rose Park is actually north of uh, one, uh, 100 North. Those properties are built in the 60s or 70s. Right. Between 600 North and 1,000 North, those properties are all built in the 50s. Yeah. South of 600 North, which is Fair Park, those are all built in the 20s, 30s, or 40s primarily. Got it. So you need to be conscientious with your portfolio. I know if I have a four-bedroom, two-bath house that's built in 1960 as a rental and a four-bedroom, two-bath house built in 1920 as a rental, I know my upside is going to be the newer property in Rose Park, hypothetically, mm -hmm. versus the older property in Poplar Grove. Right. So there's some different ebbs and flows that that's what I'm reevaluating with my portfolio. And I think, thank goodness this is recording, thank you very much, and for people that are listening, but this is a great way that everyone throughout the United States, they know their criteria of what they could reevaluate on an annual basis with their, their real estate portfolio. Awesome, awesome stuff. Thank you.